If you are a real estate agent and you are tired of cold calling, door knocking, paying for ads that flat out don't work, or just tired of not knowing how to generate leads, then this is the channel for you. We are four rockstar agents who have come together to help fellow agents achieve financial freedom as well as location and time freedom. My name is Andy Hollis along with my partners Aileen Fountain, David Doran, and Tim Hollanden. Together we have over 50 plus years experience and knowledge in the real estate and sales and training industry and we are hoping to pass that knowledge on to you. So let's get started. Talking about AI and what it can do for your business. Because here is the reality that no one is telling you that there is no future in which you don't have to learn AI, right? No future exists in which you don't have to learn AI. And guys, the world is changing right in front of our eyes. We saw it happen with the internet. And most people that went on there, there are, there, are, there are articles about the internet that say millions give up on the internet as it turns into a passing fad. That was a headline in the New York Times during that time, right? And I'm sure people talked about that with social media. Ah, social media is for kids. You don't need it for business. Now look at what it's built to. There are agents who don't even know how to do real estate, but they're getting deals done because they're good on social media, right? I'm sure some people here might know a couple. You do a deal with them and you're like, how are you even in real estate? But damn it, they're good on social media, so they get some business. Guys, AI is going is already revolutionizing the world. In case some of you guys haven't seen, has anybody here seen the Apple Intelligence that will be coming out in November? So Apple Intelligence, I recommend what I'm going to be doing is getting one business phone with Apple Intelligence, and I'm going to start getting a dumb phone, but that's just me personally. Apple Intelligence, where it will literally record your calls for you, give you notes on your phone calls, and send them to you after you are done. Apple Intelligence is going to be going through your phone, learning all the different programs and things that you use and making your process more streamlined. What it's also going to be doing, which I think this is fascinating, is Apple and ChatGPT are now going to be hooked up. Apple Intelligence and ChatGPT are going to be hooked up. Why is that revolutionary? Well, because I'll tell you, that is Apple and Microsoft basically teaming up on this. Whoa, these big competitors are now going to be working together. And it is just massive what is going to be happening. Why is this also important? Well, and I'm glad that you guys are on this call here today. Because what a lot of people don't realize about chat GPT, and this is a mindset shift where I promise if you can make this shift, you will start looking at AI all differently. Start looking as chat GPT as your lifelong employee. For taking notes, write that down. Start looking at chat GPT as your lifelong employee. And your mindset on this will start to shift. Because when you see where AI is starting to go, chat GPT in, the, in November, they're, they're saying November, but let's face it, some tech companies might be December, might be January of next year. But it is happening. Apple Intelligence is going to be hooked up with ChatGPT. What does that mean for you? Well, personally training your ChatGPT is of the utmost importance. The more that you can personally train your ChatGPT to do things, the easier your life will begin to be. Because my ChatGPT is trained to do things doesn't mean that yours is. Well, today we're going to go through the, the first steps of what it means to start training your ChatGPT. Because again, guys, start looking at this as your lifelong employee. It's going to be hooked up to your phones. It's going to be hooked up to your computers. It's going to be hooked up to damn near any appliance and anything that you can think of. And imagine if your entire home of the future is hooked up to a personally trained Chad GPT to help you run your business and manage your life better. Or it's a generic one that everybody gets. It's going to be a world of difference. So what I'm going to be doing today... I'm going to be covering over some basic first steps that everybody on here should be doing to train their chat GPT to sound like them, to market to their target audience, to really get in front of the right people. Then I'm going to go through some custom GPTs and what that means, right? Custom GPTs, what that means. At the very end, I'm going to show you guys some brand new, really cool features about what chat GPT 4.0 can do. For those of you who haven't used chat GPT yet, Everything's going to be new, so you're going to like it. For those of you who have been using it, well, I'm going to show you some badass things that you can do with ChatGPT 
4-0 today to instantly get in front of your audience quicker and do better work. You guys ready for it today? Let's go ahead and start jumping in. And just a reminder, just a reminder, guys, I have a complete list of the different prompts and some different sequences that I use. I'm going to send it over to the Freedom Team. They'll go ahead and send it out to you guys. And if you guys do have questions, make sure you reach out to them. They're a great resource for you. Um, again, appreciate you guys having me on here. Um, I don't do this for just anybody. I believe in what the Freedom Team is building. That's why I come on here and do this with them. So let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you who don't know, this is what ChatGPT looks like, right? Let's say it's your first time. I'm going to start as if it was your first time logging into ChatGPT, right? I'm going to introduce you to a saying that one of my football coaches in college told me. He would always say, do it right, do it light. Do it wrong, do it long. Fortunately for us, we always did it wrong in his eyes, so we made us run more. But the saying still holds true. Do it right, do it light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of walk you through this as if it was your first time logging into ChatGPT, starting from the beginning. So that way you guys can start to see how you can train it from scratch. So when you first log into ChatGPT, this is what it will look like. In the top right, you might want to remove all the, you know, the videos up here. In the top right, you will see this is where your profile and everything will be. It'll either be in the top right or the bottom left. They're kind of. Muted. Now I am not. Depending on where you are at, um, it will either be in the top right or the bottom left. Very first thing that everybody here should be doing with their chat GPT is coming over here and clicking on customize chat GPT. Right? I'll do that one more time. Top right, you'll see customize chat GPT. This is where you start to tell it who you are, what you do, right? So custom instructions. What would you like chat GPT to know about you to provide a better response? very first thing that you should do. This is basically where you guys put your bio, right? Come in here and put your bio, which should include where you're located, how long you've been in the business, um, different value propositions that you offer. Why should you do this? Well, that's a good question, Nick. So that way I don't have to tell it every single time. My name is Nick. I run a virtual organization in seven countries. Blah, blah, blah. blah. I've been in Cleveland, Ohio. As a real estate agent, you don't want to have to tell it that you're a real estate agent every single time you go in there. So just come in here and this is where you put your bio. <clears throat> How do you want ChatGPT to respond? I always say business casual manner. It kind of gives you some uh, thought starters over here. And then you kind of come through and then just go through how do you want it to respond? This is the first basic step in starting to train your chat GPT to do the things that you want it to do. All right. So customize chat GPT. I also want to introduce you to a new feature that they came out with, which again, is just going to make your life a lot easier. So they came out with something called the memory feature, right? So chat GPT 4.0 now has something which is a memory bank and feature. Here is why it's important to you. The more that you can tell it to save specific trainings to its memory, the better trained it will be. Just think about it like this. Chad GPT, again, guys, right? It's your employee. There are certain things and tasks you might give an employee that you might tell them, oh, you won't have to remember this for the future, but just do this now, right? Like it's not going to be duplicatable. Just do this task. And that's what basically the basic version of Chad GPT does. Just coming into here. You can tell it to do basic things one off. But just like your employee, there are some things that you will want it to remember. So that way it starts to build upon itself. Can I get some make sense in the chat with this, right? There are some things where you come in here and you could just ask Chad GPT one off questions, right? Information. But also in the memory part, there are certain tasks, there are certain marketing aspects that you will want it to remember for yourself. Let's see, two people make sense. All right, so what I'm going to do, there we go, make sense. What I'm going to do is share with you guys what you sh should start doing to save things to its memory, right? So the first thing that you want to do is come into here, and again, guys, customize your chat GPT. Here is the second thing that I would do 
for every person on this call. A big complaint that I hear about chat GPT is I can't get it to sound like me. It doesn't sound like a human. Nick, it says boast in every other sentence, right? That boast is the word I see most people complain about. So it says boast all the time, right? So here is the first thing that I would do if I were you. What I would do is here's an example of just emails that I've personally written, right? So I go through this and here's a good slew of emails that I've already written. If I were you, I would get Facebook posts, blog posts, emails that you have personally written and put it in a Google Doc. Just start stacking them up. Blog posts, emails, anything that includes your copy as an individual. Heck, listing descriptions. If that's all you got, get something that starts matching how you sound, how you write, okay? So you copy this. And what you want to do is, today I am going to train you to sound and speak like me. Here are some examples to learn from. So, and again, guys, these list of prompts, I'm going to go ahead and send over to the Freedom Team, which they can send out to you after this. But today, I'm going to train you to sound and speak like me. Here are examples that you can learn from. And I copy and pasted all the examples. And you will see, if you do this right, it will say memory updated. So it's going through and it's just going to rewrite this in its own words. And it can see engaging questions. Start with questions to capture attention, right? So boom, it's, it's great at breaking down my writing style. So first, a question's engaging. Second, relatable issues, acknowledging common struggles. Three, direct solutions, providing clear and actionable solutions. Urgency, benefits, call to action, motivational tone. Hey, what didn't you get to say? I'm pretty motivational, so I put it in there as well. Casual yet professional, a good blend. And you will see here, it says memory updated. So what does that mean? What it means is my personal GPT's memory is now updated with examples of my writing style, how I write, even phrases that I use. And there's a couple ways that you guys can access this. One, manage memories. 96% full. So you guys do have only a certain amount. That's why, this is why I'm going to show you guys how to really manage your memories here. You see, never use the word boast. But this last one, provide examples of their writing style. And it goes through and it labels step by step what my writing style is. So now it starts to understand my writing style, how I sound. So now when I'm asking chat GPT questions, it will start to more so sound like me. It's a big part in this process because who wouldn't want their chat GPT to write things that sound like them, write them in your custom style. And I'm not saying that you should just copy and paste outside of chat GPT, but it makes your life a lot easier. Start having it trained to sound like you. For the example of this video, I'm just going to make sure that I delete some of these that I do not need currently. This one as well. Awesome. But now you see memory updated. And for some reason, if it doesn't update memory, all you have to do is tell it update memory. And you're going to see, it's just going to say memory updated. Manage memories. I'm going to delete it. All right, but this is one simple way. This is one simple way that you guys can start to train your chat GPT. And I think it's always a great place to start because you can train it to start sounding like you, okay? But let's take this one concept a step further, right? Who here wants to learn more SEO? Put SEO in the chat. If you want to learn how to start utilizing ChatGPT to start helping you with your SEO and search engine optimization, SEO. Yeah, that's always a big one, right? All right, guys. So check this out. Once we understand this concept of training it to do certain things, you can start using it in other ways. There's two different ways that I'm going to show you guys how you can start using ChatGPT to help increase your SEO. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for one second because I want to make this point abundantly clear, right? I want to make this point abundantly clear. 
how much garbage information is out there on the internet, right? I see some people shaking their heads like, man, there is so much misinformation and just bad information on the internet. If you don't train your chat GPT, you're basically just asking it, find, like, get me information on SEO. It can pull from the worst SEO article on the planet and get you information from it. Right? It doesn't know what good SEO is. It just knows you asked it a question. It's going to go and scour the internet and just get you a response. Right? It's the same thing with any questions you ask it. If you just ask it, create me a, uh, a Facebook ad for buyers. And you start clapping because it works so fast. Don't mistake speed for quality when it comes to ChatGPT, right? If I ask ChatGPT a dumbass question, you get a dumbass answer. This is not like school where they tell you there's no such thing as a stupid question. With ChatGPT, there is absolutely such thing as a stupid question, right? So the reason I'm telling you this is you want to use ChatGPT the right way and train it to do certain things for you. So I'm going to show you guys. Here is one way you can personally train your ChatGPT to have better SEO. Again, what you want to do is tell it. Today, I am going to train you on how to create great for my real estate business. Here's an article to read and learn from. So today I'm going to train you how to write great SEO for my real estate business. Here's an article to learn from. Very simple. I like going to places like Google, Google SEO, that literally lays out exactly what their SEO program is. I know you can go to their other gurus that will tell you exactly how they're using SEO. I like going right to the source. But I literally come into here, and it's an entire article that Google wrote telling you how to do the SEO step by step. And I copy it and I come back here. Today, I'm going to train you. Here's a step by step process. So now, what I do is I tell it I'm going to train it. Here's an entire article to start learning great SEO and how it works. And it's going to then break it down step by step. Right? So, again, guys. What you want to do is you want to find an article. I like going straight to Google. One second, guys. Decline. Uh, I'm going to have to unshare my screen really quick so I can see this again. Sorry, guys. I had a call come in. All right. We're back. So, and then what you want to do, guys, is remember. So now it broke down common mistakes, SEO basics for real estate websites. So now it took all of these things. And then you say... Update memory. Boom. Memory updated. You know what that means now, guys? It now means that my chat GPT goes step by step, understanding the real estate guidelines. Is there anything specific you want to focus on regarding your SEO for your real estate business? And now I can start asking it questions to help build my SEO. Give it examples of what I'm looking to build my SEO with because my memory is now updated, because it is now trained Based on the Google article, Google telling you exactly what they're looking for in SEO, what you should be doing, right? So again, you want to find articles, find information, and you can bring it to Chad GPT and say, hey, remember this information. And then you can start asking it questions to start helping you build your SEO. So that's the one way that you can do it. Here's another it's very simple way that you can be helped with your SEO. So guys, on the very left-hand side, you will see Explore GPTs, all right? Explore GPTs. So here is how this works. Think of this place as your Netflix library of AI tools, okay? It's a Netflix library of AI tools. Let's see, in order to do this, so much to, in order to do this and save so much to do, have to get the papers. Yes. Um, great question. Here's what I'll say, guys. Chat GPT, there is a paid version. In order to save all of this and utilize Chat GPT to the fullest, it is $20 a month. It will be the single handed best $20 a month that you spend in your business. There's not another product or tool out there that for $20 a month where you will get more. 
for your real estate business. Doesn't exist. Spend the $20 a month so you can utilize it just like I'm sharing with you. You can use some of the things I'm telling you, but you'll run out of memory. Like it won't work as good. Great question. Cheaper than Netflix. Thank you, Peter. Literally cheaper than Netflix. Use it. But anyways, back to this. So over here, you click explore GPT and it opens up here. Here is what you want to think about this as, God. This is your Netflix library of AI tools, right? Your Netflix library of AI tools. So you could come here and be like, hmm, I want a tool that's going to help me with SEO. So you can literally type in SEO. Here is the one that I recommend. It's the one that we've utilized a good amount. Fully SEO optimized articles, including FAQs. So what a custom GPT is, is they put, you know how I shared with you guys how to update your memory and all that memory and information that you could put behind your chat GPT? A custom GPT is someone who has put pages and pages and pages of information on something called a knowledge base. Essentially, what they've done is they fully trained these AI tools, this custom GPT, to do a specific task for you. But here, the fully SEO optimized article, including F SEO, you can do a couple different things utilizing this one. You can come up here and you can type in a website that you already have and say, what would be the best SEO for this website? And it'll go through and it's going to analyze. It's going to go through searching the web, browsing. So this SEO tool is already fully trained to write good SEO. I included my one website that it has for me here. And it's going to go through and outline it step by step exactly what I should be doing to get better SEO. Here we go. You guys can literally take your website right after this. It's a completely free, like upgrade to the 20 bucks a month. Even if you don't, you can utilize this tool. You can come into it and just type in SEO and explore GPTs, copy and paste your websites. And then it is going to go through and label it step-by-step -step exactly what you should be doing to increase your SEO for your website. Here's the cool part, guys. That wasn't that hard, was it? <laughs> I literally went into Explore GPTs, clicked on the right one, copy and paste my website, and now it is breaking down step-by-step -step exactly what to do to increase SEO for this website. Things to avoid, SEO tools. It even gives me some different tools I can mix into it. Nick, should I mix in info? Can we train it to go to our website and post blogs? Um, train it to, and post blogs for you? Uh, that would take a lot more. Um, yes, but that's a lot of different training. And honestly, it's not as effective as you think it would be to actually post the blogs for you. What I am going to show you is how you can create blogs, emails, and more information off of the basic MLS data that they send you every single month. That's actually going to be a part of this training um, on how you can do utilize that as well. Good for optimizing YouTube. Let me see. Should I mix an info about the freedom team instead of just me, since that's what yeah. I'm generally promoting? What I would say is yes. So, so Sean, do you want to ask your question? It, that's the question. Yeah, because constantly promoting what we're doing as a group, it, would that confuse it if I had to mix it all together? Or how do you recommend? No, you can, you can utilize both of them. So that way, if you're promoting both you and the freedom team, I think that's one entity in a sense. So you can go into yeah. there and add information about both and you can even tell it today, I'm going to talk about the freedom team. So that way it could pull information from the freedom team. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Great question. So would you have to train it different today? I'm training you about my personal business today. I'm training you to operate as the freedom as a freedom team leader would you have to train it two different ways so that you can prompt it when you go into it train it with both and it will have both information and then when you go to then ask it information ask it like today i'm acting as a real estate agent and here's the information that i'm looking for so as long as you train it right then you can ask it to be like hey now be this person now be this person based on the training that i provided you yeah 
Yeah, great question. So guys, what I want to share with you guys is that is literally as simple as it is. One, you can train your chat GPT on SEO and it will go through step by step and it will be fully trained for you, ready to go. The second place is explore GPTs. You can literally type in SEO. The first one is the best one. I, this one I've utilized. I've tried some different ones as well, going through and utilizing this. But you might be saying, all right, so inside of custom GPTs, guess what, guys? There's a lot of different tools that you can use. I know people out there who have paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars for different logos. And you know what those people went and did? They went over here to Logo Creator. You can let it go into here, start chat, create me a logo for creme de la creme, the top shelf of real estate. Let's see what it comes up with. Let's have some fun. A few questions for you to answer. Let's see. Let's be vibrant. We're definitely vibrant. Clean and simple. Let's go seven. What colors do you think I should have, guys? Let's see. What colors are you guys thinking? Let's go freedom. Let's go blue and orange. All right, let's see what it comes up with. Finally, one logo. Let's go. Let's just go one logo. I don't want to work it too hard, right? Let's keep Chad GPT working. See what it comes up with. Creme de la creme, the top shelf of real estate. Ooh, I don't know, guys. That's a pretty good name. What do you guys think? I've always toyed around. Creme de la creme, the top shelf of real estate. And there you go. Blue and orange. And you can ask it for more information. Are you satisfied? And I can go into more details about what I'm looking for, different things that I want in it, um, and be able to utilize it from there. But that's literally as simple as going into there, the top shelf. Look at it. It's all over. I'm going to download it maybe for later. I might use it. You might, you might see this in my marketing. But that's how simple like a logo creator would be able to do. But explore GPTs, guys. This is where you can come into here and anything that you are looking to do can be found within here. I can come into here and say landing page. I know people who have wanted to create landing pages. And I'll tell you what, guys, there's a lot of copy that goes into creating a landing page. I like the second one here. The first one's not as good. Landing page copywriter. So you can come into here and you can start telling it what you're looking for in a landing page. Can I tell you what my product and service is about? We are creating a landing page for first time home buyers in Sarasota. Great. Can we more details? So, all right, this perfectly brings me into my next step of what I want to share with you guys is how to really create your target audience within your chat GPT, all right? I'm going to go through a series of prompts here, and then I'm going to go back to the landing page creator because it's asking me for this information. Here is the very first mistake that most marketers do is they do not niche down enough, right? They don't niche down. They don't clearly identify who their target audience is. The best, the biggest companies in the world know exactly who they're marketing to, and they are consistent with it over and over and over again, right? One of the biggest mistakes real estate agents make is they market to buyers and sellers. Why? Because you're really just marketing to everybody. And if you market to everybody, you market to nobody, right? If you market to everybody, you market to nobody. Don't be afraid to niche down because here's the reality. Hey, you know, like, hey, I'm a first time home buyer. What agent should I use? And they look up just realist, like first time home buyer, real estate agent. Who are they going to find? The person marketing to first time home buyers in their area, not just every real estate agent that's popping up, right? Be able to market to them. So here's what you want to do. First, clearly identify your target audience. And here's what I identify as a target audience. Who are they? First time home buyers is the target audience, right? Um, luxury home sellers. Who are they? How old are they? The age range. And I will go with like the generations. Millennial, Gen X, Gen Z, baby boomers. Nobody wants to work with Gen Z apparently. But me millennial, um, baby boomers, what have you, 
right? And then where are they located? So a good target audience would be first time millennial home buyer in Sarasota, Florida. That's a good target audience. First thing that you want to do with this. Here's what you want to do after this. You want to ask ChatGPT a series of prompts to start identifying who your target audience is better. Here's the first thing that you want to do. What are the goals of a first-time millennial home buyer in Sarasota? Home in Sarasota. So it's going to go through, and then you know what it's going to do? First-time millennial home buyers in Sarasota. It's going to go through and label this step by step. If you want to add anything that you can, but boom, you want to ask it, what are the goals of your target audience? Here's the next thing you want to ask it. What are the fears of a first millennial home buyer in Sarasota, Florida? And yes, it picks up on your spelling errors pretty well. Several fears. So it's going to go through, why am I asking it these things? Well, if I want to market to somebody, basic rule of marketing, guys, people are sold on emotion and justify with logic, right? So in order to speak to them emotionally, I have to start training my chat GPT on the emotions of my target audience. First, what are the goals? Second, what are the fears? And third, what are the motivations of a first time millennial buyer in Sarasota, Florida? Third, I'm going to go over what are the motivations of a first time millennial home buyer in Sarasota, Florida. It's going to go through step by step the goal. And here's my favorite prompt out of all of these What is the internal dialogue of first time millennial? I like that question. Guys, the internal dialogue is gold. Why? Because if you can, if you, guys, have you ever watched a video where the first line they say is exactly what you were thinking at the time? You're like, oh my gosh, how did they do that? This video is like speaking to me, right? This is what they do. Man, hey, if you're a first time millennial home buyer in Sarasota, Florida, have you ever thought, I've always dreamed of owning my own place and this is finally happening? Well, here's how we can make this happen for you. If you're a first time millennial home buyer in Sarasota, Florida, you're probably thinking, can I really afford this? What if there's unexpected costs? Well, this video is for you. Here's what we're going to do. This email is for you. Now, what you want to do, update memory with this entire chat. It's going to go through memory updated with the entire chat. And it's going to go through and lay update your chat GPT with this. And an updated memory with detailed information, goals, fears, motivations, and dialogue of a first-time millennial home buyer in Sarasota, Florida. I do not... Yeah, go ahead. Can I ask you a question? So scroll back up there to that internal dialogue. Yeah. So it says um, right here is under market timing is now the right time to buy. I mean, we hear that every day, all day, right? Yeah. So how would you continue to train G chat GPT to be able to come up with responses to that question? Is that just something you ask it again right there and have it respond? reply to that? Good question. I'm actually going to show you exactly how we would do that here in this. There's a, one more piece that I'm going to go through that will take current market data that we're all given by the MLS and then turn that into marketing and information to help your buyers and help your sellers. Awesome. Yeah. Great question, Kathy. But guys, why do, we, why do you want to start here? Goals, fears, motivations, and internal dialogue. So your chat GPT can start understanding who you're marketing to. And guys, don't create over three ideal client profiles. What these are called here is your ideal client profile. Don't create more than three. Why? Because if you're marketing to everybody, you're marketing to nobody. If you market to this person, then this person, this person, this person. Guys, I'm going to talk about someone that we all know, Taylor Swift. She is brilliant, right? I don't care how you feel about her music or concerts or anything. She is making billions of dollars, right? Millions off of each concert. She has what we call is an audience, not a crowd. 
A crowd are people that come to some shows, don't come to other shows. They're walking by, they kind of like it. Then you play another song and they're like, yeah, that's not my taste. She has a cult-like following. Why? Because she knows exactly who her audience is. She sings about her ex-boyfriends. I'm not hating on it. She's great at it. But imagine if she was singing about that and then the next song was like heavy metal and rock. People are like, what the heck? I paid thousands of dollars to listen to this. That's not what I came here for. They're not paying $50 a beer to go listen to her sing about this or that. She did a great job at identifying her audience and nailing it better than anybody else. Do the same thing with your marketing. Know who your audience is and market to them like crazy. Niche down, guys. And this is a way that you can really niche down to your audience. Train your chat GBT to only speak to three at max groups of individuals. And then you can create unlimited marketing from here. But check this out. Now, like I said, so what did this custom GPT ask me to do? Great. Could you please provide me more information about first-time millennial home buyers in Sarasota, Florida? So what did I do? I asked Chad GPT, give me the goals. Give me the fears. Give me the motivations. Give me the internal dialogue. Copy and paste this. So let's see. Now it's going to go through and write landing page copy. Step by step, how to do this part. All right. I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna cover this one too much more. I just wanted to kind of show you guys what these custom GPTs can do, right? You can go to any custom GPT, type in what you're looking to do, and there will be one for you to get done. Here's the last part that I want to share with you guys because I think this was really, really impactful. Because I also do want to save some time for questions. What you can do with Chat GPT, Chat GPT 4.0 in this update, is also create graphs. Check this out, guys. So everybody here, does everybody here get a market update from your MLS every month, right? Number, stats, reports. Can you guys put in the chat? I want to see that you guys are alive, right? Some of you guys are alive in this chat. You're not sleeping behind the camera. Do you guys get a market update from your MLS, the numbers and everything? All right. Yes, we got some people on here. Hey, you guys are alive and paying attention. Let's go. I like it. All right. So... A lot of people, some people use it. Some people, you know, you just get the email. You might use it here or there. I'm going to show you how you guys can create content with this, personalize content to you, and really take it to the next level, right? So for the sake of this video, I already, you know, here's just a market update, Ohio local MLS and the numbers that they sent us, just two of the sheets, right? So let's say you have sheets of just numbers, right? Here's what you can do with ChatGPT. So in the bottom left here, you can connect to your Google Drive, which I did, or you can upload from computer. Oh, it's not showing up there. I will upload from Google Drive. So I updated this, right? And now here is all you have to do, guys. Now create me a graph with this information. So it's going to go through and it is going to read up oh, manage. I'll do that after this, guys. Whoops. Upload from Google Drive, APR. Now create me a graph with this information. I'm going to have to manage my do, do, do. Forget. There we go. All right. Every time I need to, uh, I just freed up some space here. Now I'll create with this information. All right. Here we go. So you're going to see it's analyzing. This is one of my favorite parts. So I'm glad I got time to show you guys. So. It's going to go ahead. It's going to analyze this. And just for the record, this works with any numbers that you have, guys. Any numbers, any sheets that you have, you can come into here and tell it.
now create me a graph with this information. But for this, for everybody to be able to use it, I want to show you guys what you can do with the local MLS numbers that they send you every single month and how you can turn it into amazing content that can work for you. So let's check this out. It's going to go through and it's going to create me a graph with the numbers and information shown. You know, sometimes you're looking at this, you're like, come on, work faster. But it's working pretty dang fast already. Here we go. So it's going to go through and it's going to create me a graph with this information. You know, this graph is okay. What I recommend that you do is I tell it to focus. So here we go. It gives you some examples. So it took all that information. As you can see on this, we had number of units sold, dollar volume, average sales price on these different ones. I'm going to say for the sake of this video, focus on number of units sold. So now focus on number of units sold. I like being specific with my graph. So now focus on number of units sold for this graph. So it's going to analyze and it's going to go through. And now it's going to create me a graph that only focuses on number of units sold. All right. Here's why I like it because it's interactive. So from here, I can download the graph, right? Right from here. Or I can change colors. If you know your color codes, you can graph it and change the colors. Don't change two of the same colors. Change the colors to match more of your own. So you can come up here and you could change it if you know the color code of your brand to brand it for you. And now you have a custom graph that shows 2023 to 2024. Here is what I love about this one, guys, and creating content. Now write me a blog post about the graph. Use the SEO that I trained you on and explain what it means for sellers. And as it's writing this, so it's going to write me a blog post, 2023, 2024. Can you add your logo to the graph? You can download it, then add your logo to the graph, right? Here's what it's going to do. It's going to write me a blog post on this as well. And then it's also going to focus on the SEO that I trained it on, that you guys have saw that I've trained it on. And it's going to explain what it means for sellers. The key part of this prompt, guys, is right here. Explain what it means to sellers. Why is that the most important part? Has anybody on here seen the show Friends? Right? Everyone, right? That's a pretty common show, Friends. That's why I use it. But there's an episode where Joey, and if you guys don't know this show, Joey is not the brightest person in the room, right? But, and you see, it talks about the Krem Institute, about AI and things that we do as well, because that's what I trained it to do. But here is why I think this is important. So there's an episode where this guy comes and sells almanacs to Joey. And he asks Joey, have you ever been in a room where everybody's talking about something and you have no idea what they're talking about? And you just have to smile and nod. And they do all these cutaway scenes of Joey smiling and nodding in all these rooms. Here is the reality for your audience. When you talk about a buyer's market, they're smiling and nodding. Yeah, volcanoes, something that he talks about. You got the V volume. They're smiling and nodding. Oh, yeah, buyer's, buyer's market. Guys, 95, if not higher, percent of your audience does not really know what a buyer's market means. Heck, let's not even talk about in low inventory and market absorption. They don't even really know what a buyer's market means. I would even argue there's some real estate agents out there that don't really know what a buyer's market means. All right, I think I see some people smiling. He might have been dealing with them. But what do you what's the important part about this? Explain what it means to sellers. So you take this graph that you have, you could download it, and then you can and then you could put like your logo and things on it and make it more about you. And then you have a blog post, understanding the Ohio real estate market, key data about this. Here's what it means for sellers. The rise in units sold across most regions signifies higher buyer demand. Sellers can expect more interest in their properties. Very simply stated, right? Then it goes through strategic pricing, heating up. Sellers should consider pricing their homes competitively. So it explains exactly what it means for sellers. Or you could do the same thing for buyers as well, right? Explain what this graph means for buyers. 
But what you can do is, so you take the same numbers that you guys get every single month, boom, come to here and say, now make me a graph. From this graph, boom, now make me a blog post. Now write me an email to my database and explain what it means for buyers, just to mix it up. And then you can come in here and say, now write me an email to my database and explain what it means to buyers. Complete an in-depth analysis of the real estate market, comparing the numbers 2023 to 2024. Here are the results. Growing market, more region Ohio, but increase the number of units sold. Why this matters. Explore new listings, get pre-approved, schedule a call. So now you can include the graph and it explains exactly what's happening in the market in a way your audience can understand. Explain what it means for buyers. Now create me a Facebook post about the graph and explain why, what it means for sellers. Now create a Facebook post about the graph. How to hit market. Key insights, market growth, increased buyers. So, but you guys can see how it takes this one graph that everybody gets and now goes through and explains exactly what it means. Now write it in my writing style. I love this one, writing style. And use humor. Guys, using humor is great because I like it just gets your audience attention. Let's see what it does for humor. And set a picnic. <laughs> no, no, it makes me laugh. But using humor, guys, even if it's corny humor, man, people just like laughing. And it's it's entertainment, right? I always say use humor because at the end of the day, if you make somebody smile with your copy or even laugh, I'm like, man, that's so corny, they're gonna at least enjoy it a little bit, right? But again, you take that same graph that everybody, those same numbers that everybody gets. Then you come to ChatGPT and tell it to make you a custom graph. And that's only focusing on one set of numbers. Then I can go into volume. Then I can go into everything else that it covers. Great blog posts, emails, social media posts. Now create me a video script. Focusing on what it means for buyers. Let's see what it comes up with. Beat music. Nick standing in front of a visual appealing backdrop. I like how it always does that. Awesome. So I left some time for questions here. Key insights for buyers. And it can go through and it can label this for you guys. I'm going to stop it. And to answer your question, Kathy, I believe you had a question about, let's see, the buyers. Was there a specific one? Is now a right time to buy? Buyers are asking, it's not the right time to buy. Can you answer this question based on the graph above? See, and since I trained, it knows who I am, where I'm from. Nick from the Krem Institute here. Common questions. How many of you guys are asking, is now the right time to buy? Daniel, we asked this was a significant increase of units sold. Market growth, increased inventory, balanced prices. So it kind of goes through and it literally will take the graph and information that you feed it. And then you ask it, people are asking this question based on the graph, based on the data, the market is healthy and active with more options available to you. No one can predict the future. The current market suggests it's a great time to make a move. So that's how you can take that graph and information Take the trainings you have and be like, hey, Sarasota is such a great... Like, you can take the questions and common objections and then place it into the graph and ask it questions to edify yourself. Guys, that's what I had to show you guys today. I will get to some of these questions here. What I just really wanted to share with you guys is really understanding that there will be agents who utilize this daily, consistently, email their database, market to their database more and more and more. And then everybody else. Can you train it wrong? Yeah. I mean, you can. I mean, the, the, like, yeah, you can absolutely train it wrong. Um, how easy is it to retrain? So inside of memories, guys. So you can literally come into here on the top right. 
and do settings and you'll see where is it at speed personal personalization so inside of your memory you could come into here and just untrain it which i will do with some of this stuff delete forget forget and all of a sudden it's untrained how to do those things when you click on it you'll see thought starters formal or casual how long should responses be how do you want to be addressed and should chat gpt have opinions on topics or remain neutral so i would answer those questions first so i say business casual response short and pumpy. here's how we addressed we believe ai is here to spend less time behind a computer and more time communicating with clients we believe ai is here to improve human connections so those are like the opinions i wanted to have and then I say, right. never use the word boast, never use the word data analytics. Those are words I just hate when it uses. Um, and then I just say, here's an example of my writing style. You're only allowed 1500 characters. So you can't do like all the emails. Like I said, you have to use the memory feature for that one. But I would answer those questions that it asks you. Cause when you click on it, it gives you like a list of five, but you can say, I'm going to set up like a five-day email campaign, sequence these for five days. So that way it writes them as if it is a sequence. Okay. And then you can copy and paste them into your CRM. Gotcha. Yeah. I do like that word, guys. That's one of my favorite words. If you guys are writing an email copy, sequence. Write me an email sequence. Why? Because then it is sequential. But because sequence is, is a really important word, if you're writing a text campaign, an email campaign... The word sequence is important because then it knows that it's writing something sequentially and not just five separate emails.